Thousands play college football every year, but only a few reach the pinnacle of ultimate success. They are the 24 players who have been specially honored as the finest in all the land. The 1990 Kodak All-America Football Team. 1990 Big, quick, tackle-busting runners put their awesome stamp on college football in 1990. Running out of the wishbone, Army's Mike Mayweather became the leading ground gainer in the history of the three service academies. Howard Griffith of Illinois set an NCAA record with an amazing eight touchdowns in one game. And Greg Lewis gained over a thousand yards, running Washington into the Rose Bowl. But the coaches were most impressed with a pair of exciting game breakers. Eric Bieniemy and Darren Lewis. Colorado senior Eric Bieniemy raised his game to its highest level against the Buffalo's biggest opponents. In the Oklahoma shootout, he rambled for 188 yards and scored a touchdown. Against previously unbeaten Nebraska, 137 yards and four touchdowns. His high school background in track, paired with an instinct to make the right cut, turned this 5'7 senior into the most feared pure runner in college football. He became Colorado's all-time career rusher, and finished his playing days with more points than any Buffalo player in history. Number one with a football, Eric Bieniemy, a Big A champion, Colorado. The coaches also rated the elusive running of Darren Lewis more than worthy of All-America honors. This Texas A&M senior is the all-time rushing leader of the Southwest Conference owns more than 35 conference and school records, including scoring more touchdowns than any Aggie player in history. Darren Lewis going wide. Darren Lewis outside. Touchdown, a and Left side, Lewis. Touchdown, a and Option, Darren Lewis. What a block by Wilson. Inside the 40, look out. Lewis is going to score. Darren Lewis of Texas A&M joins Eric Bieniemy as the top runners in college football. Those running backs write their headlines only behind the outstanding play of the offensive line. These men work long and hard and are extremely deserving of this special recognition. No one has put in more time and effort to improve than Auburn's Ed King. A junior who has perfected his pass-blocking skills, King protects his quarterback with a 284-pound frame of steel. He's fundamentally, he's sound, he's a, he blocks as well for the run as he does for the pass. It just does not have a weakness as an offensive lineman. Ed King is a massive roadblock, gaining respect from opponents and the coaches who rated him among the best in college football. Honored by Kodak for the second year in a row is Colorado's Joe Garten, who can simply overpower opposing tacklers. Coach Bill McCartney says Garten is the strongest player on the team. He is the only Colorado player in history to start from his first game as a freshman. Whether opening holes for All-American Eric Bieniemy or simply controlling his opponent. Joe Garden proved to be the foundation of a high-scoring Colorado offense. 
At Syracuse, each play called begins with center John Flannery, an imposing blocker who is also a state high school wrestling champion. Possessing a degree in political science, Flannery is working toward a master's in elementary education and has taught many potential tacklers to lay off orange runners. At Syracuse, the center of attention is John Flannery. Nayland Stadium in Knoxville is the home of Hugh Antone Davis. At 310, he's the biggest of an all-American offensive line that averages 293 pounds per man. Off the field, Davis was awarded the prestigious Chancellor's Citation for outstanding contributions to the community. His extraordinary ability helped the Vols rip rival Florida's defense for 365 total yards and 45 points, topping off an All-America season for Antone Davis. Michigan's tradition of top caliber linemen continues with 280-pound Dean Dingman knows how to drive defenders back on their heels, flatten them, and enjoy a Wolverine touchdown. After coming back from shoulder surgery last year, this Michigan senior was selected by the coaches for his strength, speed, size, and intelligence. All tools needed to produce a devastating interior lineman. And all outstanding qualities possessed by the five young men honored by the coaches as the All-America Offensive Line. Booming coast-to-coast -coast punts won All-America laurels for Bowling Green senior Chris Shale. With the ability to both kick for distance and kick for position, Shale led the Mid-American Conference in punting the past three years. His season average of more than 46 yards a try set a conference record, and he twice blasted kicks of more than 75 yards putting Chris Shale up front in college football's parade of punters. He knows how to ignore the pressure of a packed stadium and concentrate on kicking for three points. That's the coach's analysis of Alabama's Philip Doyle, the Tide's all-time leading scorer. An all-around athlete, Doyle is also one of Alabama's top baseball players, hitting 346 as a third baseman. His 47-yard kick with four seconds to play upset Tennessee. The kick is up, the kick is straight, the kick is good! Alabama wins! And clinched All-America recognition for tied hero, Philip Doyle. It is defense that shuts down those high-flying offenses. And the coaches analyze hundreds of hitters to select the 11 who would meet all the qualifications of this outstanding award. First, the All-America defensive line, David Rocker of Auburn, Chris Sorich of Notre Dame, Morris Gardner of Illinois, Alfred Williams of Colorado, and Russell Maryland of Miami. As Auburn battled through its rugged Southeastern Conference schedule, the Tigers' defensive coach Pat Dye looked to the leadership of senior David Rocker. Younger brother of former Kodak All-American Tracy Rocker, David kept the family tradition alive as he chased and caught his targets. I try to have a, a relentless type of style of um, really just showing no mercy. And um, I think that's the type of attitude that um, that makes you good at that position because um, down in the trenches you can't take feelings under consideration. Big and quick, David Rocker excelled at dominating the point of attack. A unanimous choice for the All-America defensive line.
During much of the 1990s season, the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame sat near the top of the national polls. With nose guard Chris Zorich, their stubborn and dynamic Minister of Defense. This Notre Dame senior, who also plays the piano, grew up in South Chicago and brings a strong-willed, competitive attitude to each Irish battle. Number 50 says he lives to hit people. And Notre Dame fans everywhere agree that Chris Sorich is a young man who plays every down with fire and passion. As the Fighting Illini battled for a coveted bowl bid, Mo Gardner showed why he was a solid choice for a second term on the coach's All-America defensive line. No runner was saved from the jolting collisions produced by this 258-pound senior. Gardner says his role model was former baseball great Jackie Robinson because of his drive and determination. And Mo Gardner has captured and utilized both those traits on the way to another fantastic season for the University of Illinois. Another repeat coaches All-American is Colorado's tackling terror Alfred Williams. Nicknamed the Sack Man, this 230-pound Buffalo senior has corralled more quarterbacks than any Colorado player in history. In his team's important non-conference win over Texas, Williams stifled the horns with 10 solo tackles, three for drive-killing losses, and a dramatic safety. All in the day's work for two-time Kodak All-America, Alfred Williams. Miami's Russell Maryland weighed 321 pounds in high school. He dropped 50 of those at Miami and added amazing quickness to his size and strength. Teammates call him Dancing Bear. And this psychology major is respected as much for his attitude and work ethic as his pure talent. With Miami's muscular Maryland dominating opponents, the Hurricanes gained a berth in the Cotton Bowl and won for Russell Maryland, a position on the All-America defensive line. At linebacker, the coaches honored Notre Dame's Michael Stonebreaker, who returned to prominence after sitting out the 1989 season. It was Stonebreaker's final period interception against Michigan that gave the Irish an opportunity for their winning drive. And his late fumble recovery halted a Miami thrust and preserved Notre Dame's triumph. Clutch plays that helped to clinch All-America linebacker status for Michael Stonebreaker. Ask the coaches at Southern Cal to describe linebacker Scott Ross, and they say he is a very emotional player. The epitome of what a linebacker should be. Wild, totally fearless, with no regard for his or his opponent's body. Scott Ross joins Michael Stonebreaker as an All-America linebacker. In the secondary, the coaches found a safety who hits like a linebacker. Georgia Tech junior Ken Swilling was the heart and soul of a rambling wreck defense that played 240 minutes of football without allowing a touchdown. Georgia Tech won its first ever Atlantic Coast Conference Championship in 1990. With no doubts in anyone's mind, Ken Swilling was the catalyst and an unbeatable choice for the All-America Secondary. When any team lined up against Arizona, their first problem was to find where number four was located. Number four is senior Darrell Lewis, a major impact player in college football, whether stealing enemy passes, making tackles to save victories, 
or blazing down the field with a coast-to-coast -coast punt return. There goes Lewis. One man to beat. He did it. He did it again against UCLA. With just 50 seconds remaining, Lewis raced 70 yards for the game-winning touchdown, proving again why he is among the best in college football. Notre Dame's embattled secondary was young and inexperienced in 1990, and senior Todd Light was called upon to furnish leadership and guidance. Not only did this two-time Kodak All-American provide direction for his teammates, he was also seemingly everywhere on the field, conducting the Irish Express into an Orange Bowl berth on New Year's Day. Another repeat All-American is Michigan's Sullivan Anthony Wellborn III, called Trip, since he was the third in his family with the same name. Wellborn is feared for his intimidating demeanor. He makes an opponent wonder, how much do I want the football? Trip Wellborn took his game to a higher level to again achieve selection in the coach's All-America secondary. No offense can function in today's high-tech game without the pinpoint accurate quarterback to find his receivers in a crowd. Ty Detmer, engineer BYU's upset of Miami early in the year, and has thrown for more 300-yard games than any passer in history. David Klingler, the Houston gunslinger, set an NCAA record with 48 completions in one game. But the coaches awarded the top honor to a Virginia graduate student with a degree in psychology. Sean Moore took the Cavaliers to their first ever number one ranking while piloting college football's most prolific scoring attack. Poised, intelligent, and possessing a cool hand, Moore has either passed or run for more career touchdowns than any player in Atlantic Coast Conference history. His commitment to excellence continues off the field as well, as he spends many hours visiting elementary school youngsters and counseling them toward a better life. His deeds have earned him the ultimate achievement. He is Sean Moore, All-America quarterback. Nothing matches the color, fun, and pageantry of an autumn Saturday in college football. Part of the thrills and excitement of any college game are the daring and fearless young men who catch footballs. Here are the best, the 1990 All-America receivers. Ed McCaffrey of Stanford, Chris Smith of BYU, and Ragib Ismail of Notre Dame. When Stanford coach Dennis Green demanded big yards, he looked to All-America wide receiver Ed McCaffrey. An economics major with a co-term master's in sociology, this six-foot-five senior has found a home in opponent's end zone. Ed McCaffrey topped the Pac-10 in receptions and yardage and has caught at least one pass in 26 consecutive games. At Brigham Young, where the sky seemed to rain footballs, the eager hands of Chris Smith proved a dangerous target and made Smith the coach's choice as the top tight end in the nation. Detmer rolls to the right, looking, looking. Swings it back to Chris Smith on a screen. He gets away from one man, dives in and made it. Chris Smith with a great individual effort. Chris Smith thrived in this pass-catching paradise, taking his place among the best receivers in college football. Calling NASA. Calling Mars Gravity's taking over. Stand by. We're about ready.
Ready to launch a rocket. Once you're out there, it's like you're fair game for anyone who wants to try to get a piece of you. To the left, at the 30, look out, it's going to be a foot race. To the 40, to the 50, down the sideline, at the 30, floating away, at the 20, the 10, 5, touchdown all the way. The legend of the rocket was launched in 1989 when Ragib Ismail returned kickoffs for touchdowns twice in a game on two different occasions, a first in college football. In 1990, his versatility and sprinter speed turned him into the game's most feared all-purpose player. He can turn a game as quickly as he can turn a corner. More than two-thirds of his career touchdowns are over 50 yards. He's the rocket of Notre Dame. An entire game plan in one uniform and unanimous choice as an All-American receiver. Once again, the 1990 Coaches All-America team.